Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen, hier ist Bastian die Jones von Lebenslust TV, hier am Brandenburger Tor. Heute Morgen werden wir eine Konferenz ähm, beiwohnen, die von Bienvenue Angui ähm, und der Naumann Stiftung organisiert worden ist und einigen anderen Partnern. Und da sind wir sehr neugierig, weil es um den Mittelstand geht, um Innovation und um die Verbindung Europa-Afrika. Schaltet ein! Stanislas We wanted to engage in a win-win situation. What can we learn from each other? And how can we possibly work together? I have the impression um, that Europe is in a very defensive position in the world in the moment between America, between China. And Africa is the new fish out of water market and predicted as the global player the next 30 years. Um, What is true about that? What are the opportunities for Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa in specific? Uh, first of all, uh, it is, uh, uh, when, you take, when you look at the world, Europe is uh, 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 a continent that's getting older and older. Mm -hmm. Africa is a continent that's getting younger and younger. In 2030, uh, we anticipate that 60% uh, of the population in Africa will be less than 20, 20 years old. So which means that uh, this is a continent that will be vibrant dynamic with a strength and then uh, Africa is a continent that's the most potential in terms of natural resources and uh, in terms of innovation is a continent that's proven lately to be in a, a more innovative innovative uh, continent so I guess uh, uh, saying that uh, Africa is a new frontier for economic development for opportunities is really a uh, truth actually is the truth and uh, uh, however Africa has to get ready Uh, we don't want uh, this truth to become finally uh, the reality for others but the Africans. So the Africans have to be ready to be able to absorb these new opportunities, uh, these new frontiers. So this is the reason why uh, it is time now that Africa works on anticipating on these uh, uh, future opportunities. That is great and I think, um, yeah, it, this is a statement for sure. Um, my company, we are supporting an African startup as well. We are hosting in our Berlin a business won't simmer a new TV station, mm -hmm. Seven Logic TV, done by Apophis. He is from Cameroon okay. and um, he is working on searching interview partners who are presenting Africa in another way because the image of Africa is mostly the pictures we see in the media are underfed children, those are crisis, those are famines and all these things, but not the Africa, I mean Ghana or Nigeria, they are so progressive in Africa, um, especially Ghana for instance, Yeah, um, it's so vibrant as you said, but the image isn't here like that and we, we try to change it. I think, the, uh, you know, sometimes before you stay on cliches mm -hmm. and on preconceived ideas, you have to wonder why European and American go uh, 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 engage into economic war in Africa, if it's so worthless, because it's not worthless. Uh, they don't want, they want maybe the whole world to think that, so, uh, uh, so that they will appear as saviors. They're coming to save. They're not coming to save. They're coming for the profit, and we all know that. In Africa, we know that what we were weak in uh, in actually uh, we, in, in Africa, we are very weak in our communication because whatever you see that is negative in Africa, you see on European TV. You don't see an African TV. So perhaps today, Africa Africa has to understand the importance of communication and the importance of uh, 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 of branding, of national branding and, and, and continental branding so that our people, we find out what really happening in Africa. This is very important. We cannot continue to victimize ourselves and say, well, people uh, think bad thing about it. No, we have to show what is Africa. And this is the reason why we come to different from like this and talking. And so people can understand that uh, in Africa, you have very smart people. You have innovative young people, people. You have people who actually are creative and then uh, people are basically organizing themselves in a way that they would be able to absorb the opportunity that Africa has to offer. So I guess uh, the Africa that uh, European has been seeing on the TV for the past 30, 40 years have changed. This is a new frontier. This is a new Africa. And Africans intend to actually 
make the promotion through their own media and they started. This is very funny that you are mentioning it because our last interview partner, the discussion was um, what is Pan-Africanism? And um, there had been so many different point of views about that topic, but I think the main point is the identification. It's a matter of identification for Africa, or isn't it? Yes, I mean, Pan-Africanism is uh, it's a way of actually seeing Africa as uh, one entity. And uh, uh, when the, the most African country became independent in the early 60s, that was the idea. Kwame Nkrumah actually has put the idea forth, and the other one didn't follow. But today they realized that it was a mistake. It was a mistake not to engage in this federalism. And today it's more than ever important that an African country comes together. And then trying to create a coalition, trying to create a unity, that will consolidate their capacity to face the rest of the world. They're not doing that against the world or against the rest of the world. They're doing them for themselves. Uh, they have to consolidate the financial market. They have to consolidate the energy. They have to trade among each other. They have to uh, transform the, the economy so they can have uh, a product to be trading amongst each other. They have to uh, borrow among each other. And they have to uh, make sure that... Uh, you know, uh, they specialize each region in a particular domain. So this is how Africa will become strong, stronger, and stronger. So that Pan-Africanism is not only an ideology, mm -hmm. it is actually uh, uh, something that is necessary for the continent to catch up with the rest of the world. I think this is a wonderful end for this interview. Thank you for your time, Mr. Zese. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.